Hello and welcome. It's Bill Skladowski with another Friday night edition of iPhone Friday. Every Friday night at 8 o'clock, the latest on your iPhone and iPad and how you can learn some uh, new skills that will help you make your high-tech life easy, just like it says. So we've been covering a lot of the uh, new and different things that have come out with the uh, updated iPhone and iPad software, iOS 14. Tonight is no exception. We're kind of getting to the end of all of that stuff, so maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll start back with the iPhone A to Z thing that we had been doing. But there's been so many cool goodies with the latest uh, iPhone software that I really wanted to, to, to you know, hit those pretty hard. And tonight, no exception, uh, something that's brand new with uh, iOS 14 for your iPhone and iPad, and that is the ability to set the um, default app for mail and web, uh, web browsing, that sort of thing. Now, if this is something that's like, why would I ever do that, or I've never heard of such a thing, just kind of listen along, and maybe this will be useful, maybe not. But, um, well, let's see where it goes. If you've uh, used your phone at all for any length of time for things like email and surfing the web, well, you know that the iPhone comes built in. Let's jump over to, let's jump over to the phone, speaking of which. The iPhone comes built in with a browser called Safari. It's that little, it's, if you have a Mac at home, it's the same exact icon. It's the little blue compass, right? Which lets you see the web through, you know, the browser, right? So I'm bringing up a website here. Yeah, 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 there you go. All right, so website, all right. Anyway, the Safari is the, is the browser, the web browser on your iPhone. And the Apple Mail program, which is the, uh, yeah, I can't even, I don't even have it. I probably deleted it off my phone. It's the blue envelope. I'm sure you've seen it on your iPhone, the mail. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. Let's go over to the, let's go over to the app library, shall we? Yes. Look, there it is. It's that blue background with the white envelope on it. That's the mail app icon. And if you open it, it takes you to your mail. You've probably been there a hundred times. All right, so those are what we call the default app on the phone for mail and for web browsing. They're the built-in ones. They're kind of like what the phone uses or the iPad uses automatically without you asking. Now, if you're a computer user, if you have a Windows computer at home, you probably know that you can download several different web browser apps. Right? Windows comes with one built in. It's called Microsoft Edge. There's also Google Chrome and there's Firefox and there's Brave to name just four of the many, many different browsers. And you can pick and choose on your computer which one that will be used as the default one that whenever you click on a web link or something like that that has to open up a web browser, well, it's going to open up the web browser you want. For most people, that's Google's Chrome web browser. Okay. So now you can do that same thing on your phone. It was kind of a long walk to get to the point there, but basically you can set whichever app you choose. So if you default, or excuse me, if you download Google Chrome on your phone or your iPad, you can use Chrome on your home computer, Windows or Mac, doesn't matter, and you can use it on your phone or iPad just the same. And that has some benefits, like Chrome, when you sign in, it, it transfers all of your bookmarks and all kinds of things back and forth between any of the devices. So there's one possible use for that, and just maybe ease of use. Maybe you know how to use Google Chrome on your computer, and now on my iPad, uh, it's going to look and work the same. There you go. So let's get out of the, you know, <laughs> the theory and into how do I actually do that, Bill? Well... Just like everything else, it's all about settings, of course. So if we open up settings, and we're on the main settings page, and we can always tell that because it's got your smiling face or picture or maybe just a gray-white avatar there, but it always says settings at the very top. Scroll down, and, you know, there's always the same bunches of things. Bunches of things. Poor grammar. At the top, you have some of the basics of the radios on the phone, like, you know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and cell phone and all that, and notifications and sounds. You've seen those before. If you keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, you eventually get 
to all the apps that are on your device, whether it's your iPhone or your iPad, right? And if you want, you can pick on those to do things like notifications and how they behave and maybe the sounds they make, all kinds of things. But for things like mail and for your web browser, okay, you can also select that particular app as the default. So for example, now let me go back to my home screen for a split second. Down there at the very bottom of the screen, you can see I've already changed the apps at the bottom there in that bottom kind of drawer for email at the far left and web browser at the far right. If you look at your phone, you probably have the Safari browser down there and you probably have the regular iPhone or iPad mail program down there. I've already changed mine. Another show for another day. All right, back to settings. So for example, the name of that app, the email app is called AirMail and there you see it right there. So if I tap on AirMail, it's going to allow me all the usual notifications like, hey, do you want to let it show you notifications or badges or sounds or use cell phone data, all of that stuff. But here's the important one. It's the very bottom one down there. You see where it says default mail app? Okay. Now mine is still set for iPhone mail, which means this. If I tap on a link in, say, a website or somebody sends me an email and I tap on a link to go back to them or something, it's still going to open up the Apple iPhone email app to write the new app because that's the default. I can change that now by just tapping on default mail app, right? And there's three different email programs that are on my phone. And one is called AirMail, and one is the regular iPhone mail, and one's called Hey, which I'm kind of just testing. So now all I got to do is tap on it. The check mark moves. You see how that happens? For mail, has a check mark. All I'm doing is tapping right on air mail and it changes the check mark. And that's it. You're done. Okay? You're done with that. Same thing. Let's go back and look at Brave. Brave is a web browser like Safari, like Google Chrome. Okay? And I can do the same thing. Right? Right down there. Default browser app is still set for the iPhone built-in one called Safari. But again, tap on that. And again, all I'm doing is tapping to change from Safari to Brave, all right? And once again, that means just that if I tap on a link or I tap on a website that somebody emails me in a text message or something like that, when I tap on it, it's gonna open up the Brave browser app and not the Safari built-in one. Okay, there you go. Again, why would you wanna do that? Well, a lot of people, I remember as I would teach class, a lot of people really liked and used the Google Chrome browser just because it's kind of like the one that everybody knows and uses and it's the, probably the most popular one out there. Everywhere uses, everybody everywhere uses it and that's cool. So a lot of people would download it to their iPhone or their iPad and then would still be frustrated because when they tried to use it, sometimes Safari would come up, sometimes so. This will help ensure that when you go to use a browser or an email app on your phone, the one that you actually want to have come up is the one that comes up. So there you go. All right, I hope that was helpful. Again, a lot of you are probably going to be going, eh, not important, but someday it might be. So there you go. If you haven't done so yet, head on over to the website over to BillSkolodowski.com. There's the address. Sign yourself up for our uh, free newsletter. Every Sunday I send out a newsletter with... Uh, the past week's two different videos on it, what the videos were that you might have missed, and then a link so that you can go watch them if you'd like to, and also a handout of how to do the thing we did on iPhone Friday. So if you sign up, if you are signed up, this week you'll get a free handout that'll show you exactly how to do that changing the default app thing that we just did. There you go. And uh, if there's anything important from the Wednesday one, sometimes we throw that in, sometimes not. But anyway, they're yours free, you can get them, you know, print them out, keep them for yourself, and there you go. <sighs> That's going to do it. It's been an exciting week, hasn't it? <laughs> keep washing your hands. Stay, stay safe out there. If you have questions or comments, just leave them below, and uh, I will respond to each and every one of them personally. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Take care.